All right. Good day, champions. This is Noble Mike Jameson for another episode of Game Time. Uh, I'm excited today. I get a chance to share with you another valuable lesson that I've learned in my many, many years of uh, being self-employed, my many, many years of being an entrepreneur, my many, many years of just uh, experience in life, you know? And so today's Game Time uh, podcast title is um, The Reflexes of History. Write that down. The Reflexes of History. And so it's a very simple lesson, but it's so much value uh, in this subject matter that I want to talk to you about on today. And I have to start with uh, a story to kind of bring home the idea or at least the concept of what I mean when I say the reflexes of history. So, um, you know, in life, you'll have uh, several different types of friends that you will encounter, right? Which will be a whole nother podcast, by the way, right? Some people will come into your life for a reason, um, something that you want to learn from them, right? A specific reason. Some people will come into your life for a season, right? For a period of time uh, where you to gain uh, some knowledge and maybe even some wisdom uh, from them during a particular season. That season can be a couple of months. That season can be a couple of years, but uh, it definitely has a start and a end time. And, and then some people are coming to your life for a lifetime, right? Meaning they're going to be lifelong friends, no matter what happens. You know, typically it has nothing to do with business. Um, there's oftentimes um, some type of commonality that joins um, people together when they're together for a lifetime. Um, and they become a part of your tribe. Right. They become a part of your inner circle. They become a part of your mastermind group, you know. And uh, so it's a reason, a season or a lifetime. And uh, and and when you get to a, a lifetime category, you're probably talking about um, the number of people you can count on one hand. Right. Five, probably not a whole lot of people in that category uh, for most people. And um, and so many years ago. I had a really, really good friend, someone I would consider a best friend of mine that started out as a business colleague, right? We worked very, very close together uh, in business. Um, then we became really, really great friends uh, outside of business. And um, and we built a, a great uh, friendship and, um, and and a relationship. And um, And this person I would consider in that five, right? Someone that's there for um, a lifetime. And, um, and and what happened was, you know, on this journey between being friends, really great friends, uh, and uh, building a business, uh, a tragedy took place. Uh, I can remember like it was yesterday. You, you guys have heard me say it before. We even did a podcast on it, on how you'll have a thousand defining moments in life. And 20 of those moments will radically change your life. So this uh, just so happened to be a defining moment for me because back in uh, 2012, uh, on July the 11th, um, I, I spoke to uh, this individual uh, in the morning at 11:39 in the morning. I remember when I got the phone call, just speaking, you know, just touching bases for the day, and um, and of course I went on going about my day uh, for a few few minutes. And then I got another phone call and um, and I got a call from her sister. First, I got a call from a number I didn't know, which I didn't answer. Uh, and then I got a phone call minutes later from her sister informing me that she had passed away. Right. She had passed away. And it was a tragedy because it was a result of a car accident, right? She was sitting in an uh, intersection at a, at a red light and an 18 wheeler blew through the red light, crashed into her vehicle and uh, she died on impact, right? 
And I can remember it just like it was yesterday, the date, the time, everything. And what it became to me was a, a true reflex of history because um, I had actually um, missed a call. Okay. Missed a call from this person prior to that. And so for the next two years, for the next two years, I would be uh, not necessarily get into a panic attack, but the trauma experience from missing a call from someone that that was that important to me became a challenge. And so literally for the next two years, anytime my phone ring, right, I made it a point to try to answer because I didn't want to miss any call because subconsciously in my mind, I would be thinking that that would be the last call, right? I can't miss what could potentially be the last call from X, Y, and Z person uh, that I that I love and care about, right? And so that was for like two years straight. And it ended up being a reflex of history on how I, you know, how I conducted my life as it relates to phone calls. It didn't matter who it was. It's like, I, I mean, if I picked up my phone and I saw that my mom called, man, I was trying to call immediately or my kids or anybody. It didn't really matter. It was just the trauma of the experience, that reflex of history caused me to do that for like two years. Okay, two years. And same thing happened uh, with another experience. Uh, when I was probably in, let's say the fourth grade, so I'm about nine years old. And for those that have heard me speak before, you know, I come from a a single parent household, which is a blessing, by the way. I'm not saying it as an excuse. I'm saying it as a blessing, but you got to really understand the story in context. And so um, at, at the age of nine, I'm in the fourth grade. You know, my mom is, she's, she's standing on her own, right? So we're living by ourselves, and she's doing her best to to provide for me and her. And um, and so we lived in this apartment complex in uh, in South Carolina. And uh, have my own room, right? That was pretty cool. You get the chance to have your own room, which is amazing. Uh, but anyway, and and uh, but there there became you know sometimes you hear that there's winter months, right? Sometimes that statement can be literally and figuratively, okay. And in this particular case, it was um it was both, okay. It was literally, and it was figuratively. And here's what I mean when I say literally. Well, when I say literally, it was uh, coming into the winter season uh, in in the Carolinas, and it it doesn't get like brutally cold like it like it does in the uh, in the Northeast, like New York, or maybe even in the Midwest, you know, Ohio, Wisconsin, and those places, right? But it gets cold enough. It gets cold enough, and so we were literally coming into a winter season. Um, when I was nine, so if I'm nine years old, that, this would put it in 1984, right? And um, so, but figuratively, um, because you know my mom was really doing her absolute best that she could, we were not in a position to have heat in the apartment, right? Now, the fortunate part about the story is that we had a gas um, stove, okay. We had absolutely no heat. Um, now, the apartments had heat, but ours wasn't on. <laughs> okay, let, let me be clear about that. The apartment complex did have heat, okay, but ours wasn't on, all right? Because sometimes you're you're put in a position to where, you know, you got to make a decision on, on what gets paid and what doesn't get paid, depending on the circumstances. In this particular case, um, the heat didn't get paid. So, uh, but we had a gas stove. And so I can remember getting up or waking up, you know, getting ready to go to school and it be freezing cold in my room. I'm talking about freezing cold. Now, if you've ever been uh, in somewhere that's cold, you know that when you breathe your air, right, you take a breath in cold air, you can actually see your breath because of the, uh, the density of the air that's around you uh, is less dense than, than the breath that's coming out your mouth. So you can actually see, right, your your breath, 
right? It's, and it's warmer as well, right? So you can see, you can see yourself breathe. Well, imagine being in your room, in your bed, and you can see your breath. That's how cold it was, okay? And um, and I can remember my mom waking me up first. She would always come into my room and wake me up, not to get up, but just to wake up in preparation for school, just to wake up first. Uh, and then she would go into the kitchen and she would turn on the, the gas stove and open up the oven door and heat up the kitchen, right? And so about 15 minutes later, after waking me up, she would come into my room for me to get up and I would grab my clothes that I got out sit, had sitting on my bed, you know, in preparation for school for the next day. And I would run from my bedroom into the kitchen where the heat was. Where the heat was. Because the kitchen was the only place that had heat because of the gas stove. Right? And so I would get dressed in the kitchen every day for school during the winter. All right? And so today I make a lot of jokes about the cold weather with my friends. And uh, and I do it, you know, with a light heart. Right. Very jokingly. But but it's really a reflex of history on how that experience of me being um, uh, coming, you know, growing up in, in, in like that, you know, from the age of nine, at least at a year or so, um, kind of put that trauma into my life as well. So I have another reflex of history that I reflect on all the time to where I don't want to experience cold weather. Right. So that is literally a reflex of history for me that I can remember just like it was yesterday, just like another defining moment. So for me, when I think of cold, I think of that. Right. When I think of cold, I think of that. And that's just not something that I want to always remember because it was tough. It was tough. OK. Another reflex of history. And so which paid a huge part on me, you know, leaving. Detroit when I lived there for two years working for my uh you know my first engineering job for Chrysler to a hot location hot Atlanta right it wasn't you know it wasn't you know just a circum a, a happenstance it was by design like I needed to really be somewhere warm because of the reflex of history that I had experienced um you know in all the way back since the fourth grade you know being nine years old um, and so those types of things are things that we as individuals can learn from and can also grow from. But there's valuable lessons in that, by the way. Right. There's valuable lessons in that. And I want to talk to you about um, the lesson in this because um, we can all grow from it. Right. None of these things are, are shared with you for uh, the intent to feel bad. We're always talking about lessons and getting better. On, on this podcast, right? So when you talk about a reflex of history, how how can you utilize that to 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 advance your life in in one degree or another? And uh, I'm reminded of a story that I read recently about um, pearls, right? About pearls. As a matter of fact, one of my really good business partners and friends, by the way, has a, has a um, a, a business. And her her vehicle is called Pearl, right? Uh, but it's about pearls and how pearls are are created. And I want to kind of look at my notes here because I want to make sure I, I get this right. Um, did you know that an oyster that has not been wounded in any way does not produce pearls? I want you to think about this. I'm going to repeat this. Did you know an oyster that has not been wounded in any way does not produce pearls. Now, obviously you got to know that or pearls come from oysters. Okay. That's the first thing you got to know. You got to know that pearls come from or oysters, but an oyster that hasn't been wounded in any way does not produce a pearl. Okay. So here's what I want you to write down in your notes. A pearl is a healed wound. Write this in your notes. This is this is powerful. A pearl is a healed wound. 
Okay, so listen to this. Pearls are produced. Pearls are a product of pain. The result of a foreign or unwanted object that enters the oyster, such as a parasite or a grain of salt, is an example of something foreign that can enter inside the oyster shell. Okay. And, um, and as a result of that, there's a, uh, the, the oyster has a, a defense mecha mechanism that when at foreign object, whether it's a parasite or whether it's sand or anything like that, right. It's, all, it's like it's immune system, right. Whenever that foreign object enters the oyster, this, um, this 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 liquid called the what is it called nacre n a c r e yeah n a c r e nacre nacre this nacre uh defense mechanism that the oyster has covers the parasite or the foreign object so it makes a layer over the sand or it makes a layer over the parasite protecting the the defenseless oyster from the foreign object and it continues to make another layer and it continues to make another layer and it continues to make another layer until there's a wall built up to protect the oyster and that wall of layers we call a pearl isn't that powerful we call it a pearl right so the result of the beautiful pearl is formed from the pain of the oyster, right? That's how it's formed. And so you don't get the pearls or the valuable pearl from the oyster without the pain, without the adversity, without the foreign object or parasite. You don't get it, right? And so I think that's extremely powerful because pain doesn't come without purpose. Pain doesn't come without purpose. So if you have pain, understand that there's purpose behind it. That's really the underlying lesson, right? That's really the reflex of history, right? If you have pain, there's actually a purpose behind it. And so what we want you to do is you identify these different reflexes of history that you have typically because of it being a reflex, meaning it has created some type of trauma, some type of pain. OK, now you got to identify how do you turn that pain into purpose? How do you turn that pain into purpose? I know how I do. Right. When I reflect back on the first story that I share with you. Uh, with losing my friend to the tragic accident, right? I I treat I I I treat my close friends like real friends. Like I value them. You know what I mean? I value them. That that lesson, that that time step created how I treat my friends today, and how I'm you know true to my friends and and authentic to my friends and. And being a real friend, right? That that's that was my 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 purpose out of that out of that pain came that. That's how I am. Like if if I'm your friend, then I'm your friend. Like you don't have to worry about me talking behind your back and back. I mean, that's not. I don't do that, right? I I have purpose behind my relationships, my close relationships, my friendships, my lifetime friends. It's purpose behind, right? And the exact same thing with the second story that I shared with you. Even when it comes to enjoying, you know, warm weather, right? Life is just better. I don't, it doesn't, <laughs> you just think about it. Sure, you have people that dream about having like a, a white Christmas and snow, but that's only a short period of time. People don't want to live like that a majority of the time, right? They most likely want to stick their feet in the sand and enjoy the beaches of the world with beautiful weather. You know what I mean? purpose like purpose and so i want you to take this time from this lesson right identify some of these reflexes of history that you may have which typically has resulted some type of pain okay 
Identify the purpose that you can create from that. Identify the purpose that you can create from that and align with it. See what type of projection, what type of course it will help you chart from that. So you can create the pearl from the pain like the oyster does, right? Create the value, create the beauty as you grow and develop through the pain. You know what I mean? And so a uh, simple lesson for today. Definitely want to share it with you. Something that I always value in terms of uh, friendships and relationships and, you know, all of those cool things as well. So we're excited. Hopefully you are. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to our Game Time podcast as of yet, please do so. Share it with your friends, family, and neighbors. Uh, we love to increase our subscription uh, base so we can continue to pour into people's lives and add value. So listen, thank you so much for chiming in. This has been another episode of Game Time with Noble Mike Jameson. Take care and take charge.